Hi guys, in case you're wondering what the Love After Divorce Season 4 cast members have been up to lately, I am here to give you the latest scoop. First up is the honey couple, Jerome and Benita. Jerome and Benita were each other's final choices by the end of the show and they are still together till date. They in collaboration with other members have created sweatshirts and hoodies for a good cause to give full donations to two charity organizations, one in South Korea called Yana and another in the United States called Baby to Baby. Both charities help less privileged children. Besides their philanthropic works, Trinita has been having loads of fun at different vacation spots and progressing in their relationship, going to the Broad Museum recently, also visiting a scented oil shop, where they both created some scented oils for each other. Jerome named one as Icy Forest. Benita also took a trip to Cancun with her parents, although they did not visit LAD4 locations during the trip, she had a great time bonding with them and Jerome hopes his parents can take a trip together next time. Fans are going wild after she returned from her trip and they posted this picture of her kissing Jerome. Everyone knows that Benita is shy when it gets to PDA, so fans praise Benita for being bold and coming out of her shell. Others speculate her bold picture is because she's missed him so much after spending some time apart traveling with her parents. They had a great time watching a robot competition for the first time in person, showing support for a younger member of Benita's family, while also having a date night at the Mexican market. Fans are hoping they will marry soon. Also, if you recall, their display pictures used to be each other's photos on Instagram, but now, they have placed each other's baby pictures as their profile photos, Jerome has Benita's baby photo on his profile and vice versa. This couple is always filled with cuteness. Sora just got back to the US recently from Korea after spending the holidays there. She and Jackson adopted two dogs, absolute cuties from Korea to join their growing furry family. She's into public speaking with lots of motivational and educational talks, so check out her channel for more details. Tommy also visited her for a couple of days and just returned back to Vegas. We all know how much Tommy misses Sora's cooking as he's whined about that a couple of times in his lives. They met up, had fun with Sora's friends and of course spent time cooking and enjoying Sora's food. Guess what Tommy does all the time lol. What is Tom doing? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yep, my guy meditates whenever he gets the chance. It's all mental what folks. Is Tom doing? Tommy does a bunch of lives on his channel helping people with physical and mental health. Check his IG page for his so masterclass. After having a blast with Sora, he's now returned back to Vegas. He even did a short live while driving back to Vegas. Uh, Don't worry guys, his car was on autopilot. Here are a few highlights from his live. Hi, Nina. Okay, I'm driving safely. Autopilot here. How long will I stay in Vegas? I live in Vegas, Shincho. Free. Thank you, Sarah. I will drive safe home. Ah, 안녕하세요, hot chocolate. 기억나요? Oh, 
저희 막 좋아해요. To the second couple of the season, He Jean and Jimmy. Guess what? They're still going strong. Jimmy even ditched his beard in the new year. It was really odd at first because he now looks like Jimmy from Cancun LOL, I got used to the bearded Jimmy and really loved his facial hair. But hey, if the change makes them feel good, then cool right? I'm loving how this couple is enjoying each other's company and having a blast, visiting each other in turns even with the long distance, they're still making it work. This is what a committed relationship feels like. Amazing right? Harem has been doing pretty good as well, sharing cute moments with her kids until she recently decided to trash her ex-husband online. Here is what went down. First off, she shared a screenshot of some text messages she sent to him, the message showed her asking if he was ever going to take custody of the kids and she mentioned that DSHS would be sending him papers. Then in her caption, she writes, I'm writing this because it's important for people to understand what single moms go through because of deadbeat dads. I just spent three weeks hardly sleeping and just spent another night staying up all night with a crying sick child. It's almost a zero sleep schedule that I live on. After staying up for days and weeks at a time, I still go to work full time and somehow manage meals, classes, clothes, rides, basic and advanced livelihood needs for three children. Most people have a hard time just getting through a full work day without buying at least one meal or at least taking a nap. On top of this, we have to spend what little time we have that we should be using to rest to chase down negligent ex-partners in court. But the funny thing is this, the single moms who work themselves to death and are the victims of the deadbeat dads are looked at like trash if we even talk about taking deadbeats to court, as though the ex-partners' actions somehow reflect on us as lowly people even though we are the only ones doing everything in their absence. 
And yes, abandoning responsibility to purposefully make the single mom's life as difficult as possible and to hurt the mom by not providing for the children to make her scramble for her children's sake is both abusive to the children and the mom. The deadbeat dad always claims it's the mom who doesn't let him see the kids, and no one thinks badly when the dad's victim blame. They take his word while shaming the moms for airing dirty laundry. My ex has seen the kids less than three times the past year, refuses to be involved and yet I'm pressured to stay silent to save my own reputation. But why are his actions tainting me as a person? After weeks of no sleep, I'm criticized that my home is dirty, that I'm too cranky from stress and sleep deprivation. I can't even date freely. My ex freely meets women and ignores his sick children, while claiming I won't let him see them. After three weeks of no sleep, I have to use my little free time filing for child support enforcement. We single moms push ourselves with pure strength, pull the impossible to the brink of collapse and then are stereotyped as incompetent and unstable women. But no one can do what we do. After this post, a fan brought up an important question that'll be on the minds of those who've been following Harem for a while. The fan asks, Harem, a few months ago, you were defending this man. And now, it's totally the opposite. Then Harem responded with, I was saving some negative publicity for my children's sake. Not defending him. Now I see that it's just better to show reality because he does nothing for his children and doesn't deserve credit as though he does. In her next post, she shifts gears, addressing a more immediate matter. In the screenshot of her email to him, she writes, Today is Zodan's birthday, you failed to show up or do anything for him yet again. You got your paycheck and you blocked me again because you don't want to pay child support. I think you are really misunderstanding that child support is the law. If you don't pay it by your own promise I have no choice but to take you to court. You've shown me that's what you want. So I won't wait for you or for your convenience anymore. That's the gist of her email and her caption on the post was. When my ex didn't get his way, he made it a point to never appear at the children's birthday parties or performances. This was true during marriage and after divorce as well. Everything had to be on his terms or he would hurt the children to hurt me, since it pained me to see the kids long for their dad and then get hurt when he didn't show up. I stopped giving in to his demands just to get him to stop hurting the kids around the time we started separating and he hasn't been to a birthday, school event, or performance since. He might have photos of one or two birthdays he attended to try to make it seem like he was present, but those were only rare occasions where he got something in return like I didn't sue for child support or something like that. When I asked him to pay for 50% of the parties, he would not show up and would block my number. The responses she received from fans varied. Some advised her while others with genuine confusion wondered why she defended him some months back and now decided to call him a deadbeat dad. She always responds to comments. Some commenters argued she was looking for pity online, others said she's always playing the victim, while some others stated she should get lawyers involved even advising her about some steps she can take, since she lives in the United States, a country where the law works. She had a lot of responses to comments but the funniest one was when a commenter said. Harem, you're assuming a lot of things. One is that you can choose not to have children. You chose to have children. Breaking up with their father is statistically common, so you should be prepared to be a single mother and not make it your whole personality. And Harem responded with, Sweetheart, there is no cure for your level of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, her clap back was funny as hell. Another person said, I thought his religion forbids him from celebrating birthdays and she responded that his parents are religious, not him and that he celebrates his birthdays. This comment was later deleted, I'm assuming it's because the comment revealed her ex's religion which I will not mention in this video. Also in the comments according to her responses, she stated, he only paid child support a few times after Netflix not even the full amount owed. Now that it's died down, he stopped paying again. She also clarified through her response to comment by saying, he's avoiding court, 
refusing to give his address so I have to go through a long process to prove I delivered papers to him, and then is claiming that I'm harassing him to get court orders served, it's truly clown behavior. What do you all think about harem situation guys? Personally, I think it's unfortunate that harem had to endure such challenges, no woman should have to struggle to secure support from the father of her children. Unfortunately, I believe Harem's credibility took a hit in the eyes of the public when she defended her ex-husband right after the show, portraying him as a great man facing financial struggles. So it's really hard to believe what she is saying now since there are two sides to this story. Additionally, I feel she needs to always pause and carefully consider the consequences of her actions before taking them. She once said in her live that she's an action-oriented person. I interpret this to mean she acts before thinking things through. However, acting impulsively without considering the potential repercussions and its ripple effects may lead to a life filled with regrets, even if not publicly acknowledged, deep down, one knows when a mistake has been made. While I empathize with harem situation and sympathize with what she is going through because all kids deserve the presence of their dads, but publicly crucifying him for self-justification might not be the solution. I hope she seeks help and support from relevant departments in the United States. If the man is as problematic as she claims, he might run her down a rabbit hole of frustrations and negativities. I feel like she, focusing on raising her kids independently, assuming their dad is no longer present, could be a healthier approach. This way, she may navigate the mental and emotional pain she's experiencing. By nurturing her children properly, she will find joy in their growth. Deadbeat dads often come back seeking forgiveness eventually. The future is closer than we think, hoping all single parents out there stay strong and wishing all mothers the best. Thanks for watching, hit the like button and subscribe if you want more content like this. Bye.